Well, you'll have sex in college. Everyone does. Yes, but the point is to be good at sex by the time you get to college. You don't want girls thinking that you suck dick and fucking pussy, okay? I still think you have a chance with Jules, man, really. And she got incredibly hot over last summer, and she obviously hasn't realized it yet, because she's still always talking to you and flirting with you and stuff. Are you out of your mind? Look at Jules' dating record, okay? She dated Dan Remick, who's had a six-pack since, like, kindergarten. Jason Stone, who looks like fucking Zach Morris. And Matt Muir! Matt Muir, he's the sweetest guy ever. Have you ever stared into his eyes? It was, like, the first time I heard the Beatles. Hey, you know what? Welcome back to the Horror Podcast. I believe it's super bad. Get should get a Criterion release. My name is the Kino Cowboy. I'm here with Boston Flasher. We got Sam and we got Scott, the no longer expat. The ex expat. Today we are talking about a personal top ten of mine called Super Bad. It is my favorite coming of age movie. And Adrian, really over. Daisy Confused or 400 Blows or any of that shit? Yes, that's just how it is. This movie speaks to me on levels I can't even comprehend. It is the most accurate high school boy dialogue in the world. And it came around in a time in the 2000s when there were a bunch of dick and titty comedy movies <laughs> titty dicks and on the surface this might just seem like another sex comedy but there's much more to it than that and that's what we're going to be talking about today also this is one of two movies that sam showed me in his old house back in fucking 2008 at a sleepover we watched Step Brothers and Super Bad back to back and it was a fucking wild ass crazy time <laughs> especially cuz me back then i hadn't seen movies this crass before thanks sam so i was like <laughs> getting thrown through the ringer um and i enjoyed it a bit but it wasn't until like 11th grade that this movie fucking hit for me hard and uh yeah so that's my experience with super bad. What about you? Super bad. Uh, super... <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's always been one of those movies that like I, I when did this come out? Like what? 2007. Okay, 15 so years ago. So yeah, I this was like one of those movies that we got to sneak around and watch. I watched it with the, the crew of friends I had in like middle school. We came mad obsessed about it. Um, and it's kind of always one of those ones you can go back to. Um, and then, you know, the classic Adrian costume is still iconic. Oh, yeah. Shit, I forgot. Uh, I was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Halloween 2010, I was Seth from Superbad. <laughs> I even had, I even ruined a nice pair of gray um, pants to put the blood stain on it and everything. <laughs> I will good. post the photo in the video in post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right here <laughs> you e- you even had i remember because we had a class together you even had a lunchbox filled with drawings of dicks. no i did not you did. did yes I? you did wow i know you had the fucking yeah 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 i i brought detergent. the lunchbox because i didn't want to lug around detergent at school <laughs> right <laughs> that's, alcohol. that's fair also you wanted an excuse to draw a bunch of penises. Oh yeah, dude. I, I'm actually pretty good at drawing dicks. Dude, so you draw them so quick. It's weird. Yeah. Dude, right here on the couch. It's, you have your 10,000 hours in. This was like, dude. Like, think of a more I don't know, Jonah Hill in this movie. It's just like what he dialed into is incredible. Yeah, blew him up. Um, this was like the movie that really started him. Yeah, because like before that, he was just in a couple of things. Like he had that small role in a forty-year-old virgin. What yeah, else? He was, uh, he was in knocked fucking up. accepted. Oh yeah, he was in knocked up. Oh yeah, accepted. That movie ask me about my things. wiener. Yeah, yeah. That, and he was just that guy. He was yeah. a joke in the trailer. In yeah, a very, yeah, he, he was, was, he was like a, he was like a character in it. He was like one of those. He, he was, but that's what he. You remember. I know, but that yeah, yeah, that was the trailer. He joke also that. stuck titties on uh, Grandma's Boy. If you guys don't remember that. Oh I, yeah. I don't yeah. know if I remember that. I like Grandma's Boy. <laughs> I love Grandma's Boy. I forgot about that scene. That's hilarious. It's a great three AM hotel movie. 
twice. Yeah. When you're like donkey brain stoned, just throw yeah. that shit on. Yeah, that's a good one. The yeah. um, but what 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 do you mean when what he dialed into? What do you mean his character? What do you? Uh, yeah, what do you just say? how he disappears and becomes every fucking twelfth yeah, grade fucking prick asshole guy you've hung out with yeah he's like the most narcissistic nerd on the fucking planet who just is like he's got like good fucking comebacks but he's a pussy you know like how (laughs) like that what i think it works one thing that works about this movie is there's different levels of nerd and i kind of felt like i was the same level of nerd as these guys and adrian casher i think you were above me on the social hierarchy although we graduated different years but um and a lot of that was by choice on my end but <laughs> there's you're not the lowest like wearing naruto clothes to school nerds you're a step above where it's like you're still able to interact with other social groups yeah but there's definitely a fact where you're lower on the totem pole let me just put McLovin in... is a bit he's a, he's a bit lower but even oh, there like, oh, this uh, <laughs> let me just put in a little disclaimer for gen z wearing naruto and anime shit when we were in high school got you beat not up. cool definitely not cool <laughs> <Yeah>. it's <laughs> fucking whack uh yeah. now it's cool all the weed thrown cool. into a locker <laughs> yeah you yeah. fucking wear a sweatshirt with ichigo on it you're gonna be fucking praised Fuck. now <laughs> school 10 years ago 15 years uh, ago it's bullshit yeah they, yeah no <laughs> idea off. the trials and tribulation so we went through <laughs> Oh, you I like those Chinese angry. cartoons? Yeah. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> like, no, mom, it's anime. <laughs> it's yeah. manga. And now, and now, to put it in perspective, number one movie of the box office this weekend was fucking Dragon Ball Super. Again, you know which is sick. You know, it's nuts. It's fucking sick. a. I mean, the last time that happened was Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer was number one in the box office. For- I know, but when I like. I'm just saying it's not a thing in fucking. I know it's fucking. No, I used to have to rent those movies on VHS. Yeah, yeah. And now now it's this. Yeah, no. Um, The fact that Demon Slayer, which is it's not an obscure anime, of course, but more so than DBZ. DBZ's it is still very Japanese. Yeah, recognize. Yeah, yeah. If not the most recognizable, the fact that Demon Slayer got number one shows how much things have changed, which reminds me of another movie that Jonah Hill was in, 21 Jump Street, when they go back and da da da, da everything's cool. Um, but this movie, my I don't know when I saw this movie for the first time. I had at least seen parts of it. I remember really wanting to see this movie when it came out. I think I was, were you guys in seventh grade? I was in eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted to see it. I even had a super bad shirt, despite not being allowed to see the movie. <laughs> That's um, funny as fuck. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. What was um, the shirt? It was just the logo, shirt. the silhouette with the star of them. It's a super bad. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. that Dude, that's cool. The uh, Yeah, just kind of Target or something. But um, so it always, so I don't remember exactly when I saw this. I might have seen it. I don't know if my first time with these, you, Adrian, or just by myself or on TV or what. But this is something I always pitch and exactly what you said. This is the most accurate teenage boy dialogue I have ever seen in a movie. And it is also one of the most accurate movies I've seen about male friendship. And those two things al- alone elevate it to places it almost doesn't belong to be, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> considering what the movie is. And it's hard to explain look from the outside looking in, or even if you're part of a different generation, you know, because this is, I mean, this is millennial movie to a T. This, this is our generation. And I, I I think if you maybe if you came before I don't know kids today I don't know how much they can um, um, relate to certain aspects of it because it's not politically correct. Well, but that's also why it's actually, um, thankfully from what I've seen, it's maintained a, a like a, a favorable status. Well, like a classic. It's like a new you know like a new age classic. Yeah, it is. And, and um, I've I've seen tiktoks about newcomers to this movie and it has been overwhelmingly positive so that's a really nice thing to see if that's not just the algorithm giving you what you want yeah but no you know um, no no i think this is the as john hughes movies were to the 80s this is to the 2000s that you know it's a fucking time machine for sure 
It, sure, it is. It's... And it's really interesting because there's a lot of anachronisms in this movie um subtly a lot of it's in the costuming because they have to wear their dad's clothing (laughs) and stuff and even every house they goes to i mean not the big house at the end but when they're in that house party and even seth or evan's house wherever they are has all that wood paneling that makes it seem 70s ranch style 70s ranch style yeah it's like a house one of our homies would have rented back in the day too well i just yeah i love it's got that double-sided nostalgia. Yeah, it feels like uh, old seventies, eighties, like thing. Um, but also, um, distinctly mid two thousands. And that's the thing is like, it's clear as day is that these are what teenagers would say. They're gonna drop words that you know people don't really say today, like faggle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still, I still like fucking, faggle. Yeah, <laughs> I still fucking say that. I still, it's one of my favorite insults. Okay, that is that. like just the most childishly mean fucking yeah. insult in the movie. It's so funny. <laughs> just uh, even it's, it's, and, and the uh, when it returns later, the the payoff is when Fogel walks out of the police car and they're on the ground and he mouths. Yeah. <laughs> so, so good, good. <laughs> and the, i i think the key to this movie is the fact that seth rogan and evan goldberg started writing this movie while they were teenagers and they just kept rewriting it and rewriting it but the core of the movie was written during this time period for them you know or their time period you know mm-hmm. um of being teenagers so it's authentic and it gives um, a good payoff if, if people don't realize you know seth and evan in the movie are named after seth rogan and evan goldberg and right, right. longtime friends and collaborators well, it's funny uh, to think of i wonder <laughs> clearly it's heightened but was seth broken like that in high school pre-freaks and geeks was he bad? Have, you his, have you seen his old stand-up no, no actually it, it, are there clips doing, online yeah he's got stand-up from when he was like 13 14 15 years old wow which you can watch online he's dirty like he's <laughs> witty and funny that's like how he was discovered he's uh, he used to stand up all the fucking time and he just well, that's one of the i i heard a wtf podcast with mark Marin with seth rogan and he actually said one of the things he was almost trying to emulate older stand-ups and the older stand-ups came up to him and they're like Dude, you have a good sense of humor. You have to understand, you're 14. You can talk about things you none of us can talk about. Like, you can talk about how you've never touched a titty. Like, nobody, yeah. nobody else here can talk about that. <laughs> that's I authentic. Mean, and that's a real thing. Because honestly, if they did him in that, he's like, we wrote that. And all we knew in high school is that we were never going to get laid. And like, <laughs> that's kind of what you think, or at least what I thought. Um, that's gonna be the stuff I start writing is how I've never touched a titty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not even. Not dude, even it's like all. that. Uh, it, I don't know about if they did this for y'all, but it, in eighth grade of Bob Courtway in our one of our classes, they brought in like a real forty year old virgin to talk they to us about. That. Fuck you. Fuck. Fuck that, dude. The, to talk to us about waiting for sex and Stop. like no. That's not the way to do it. It was pathetic. It's so fucked up. No, and, I didn't have that happen. And for like, Fucking for a minute before the guy walked in, I was like, this is probably just a scam. You know, like <laughs> he's probably not a 40 year old virgin. And then he walked in. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like fucking Steve Buscemi put on like 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, why would you do this? School did a lot of crazy shit to make you not do crazy shit. <laughs> You know, like I, I, get, I learned about drugs from school. That, I would be a kid, yeah. and they'd be like, be, don't do crack. And I'm like, what's crack? Like, <laughs> yeah, for real. And they're the words you don't say. And then you start saying class, those words. Yeah, they were like, having sex before marriage is bad, blah, 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 blah. Wait for your partner. And then they literally showed us like pictures of dicks with warts and shit all over them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Human yeah. fucking gone around. Now I'm just attracted to things that have warts on it, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <so weird. laughs> You shaped my young mind. <laughs> but, like, what the fuck? I don't know why they did that. Um, no, this oh, is yeah. accurate. Like, the fucking opening scene of this fucking movie all the way to the end is just fucking iconic. The use of, like, the 70s fucking music 
on yeah. top of having like a modern story. With yeah, Bert. the um, a lot of yeah the uh, the tracks the score was made by a guy named Lyle Workman, and he wrote all these awesome 70s sounding riffs and tracks. And I used to listen to the fucking soundtrack in school. <laughs> like, I love that album so much. Evan's Basement Jam, what a good track. And then the, the fucking, dude, the track that played on the DVD menu What's is iconic. Because everyone would leave it. the fucking DVD menu. as one of those DVDs that everyone would just forget and that they yeah. left on. And so you yeah. hear that track loop over and over again. It was but, a fun little DVD screen too, of them like dancing. Yeah, and what an interesting like choice creatively to go that route with like the seventies opening and the tracks and like I don't know, it's interesting. And it's not like Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg fucking went to school in the seventies, you know. But yeah, no. It makes it how old is Greg Batola, the director? Yeah, yeah, enough. it's true. It's Oh, yeah, he was no. born sixty four, so he's uh, okay. old enough. Oh, he was yeah, born in sixty four. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. He was in high school in the late seventies. Well, what a good fucking choice then. And um, if people haven't watched his other films, we've talked about Adventure Lands, and we've also briefly talked about his uh, underrated film. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Day Trippers. Yeah, Day Trippers, which I think has a Criterion release. It does. Yeah. That's underrated movie. I really like. Does that. this one have too many dick and pussy jokes? To be a <laughs> no, one? no way. It's time will come. I believe it. You really do. You believe in your heart of hearts. It's time will see you in. Yeah. Well, this like, movie opens. I mean, solos in the Criterion Collection. It's interesting <laughs> when you talk to people who haven't seen this movie, and I try to explain why it's so good for everything we've said about the the emotional core and the. I, I mean. Some I mean there are parts of this that it's it's almost Sorkin esque like that level of rapid fire dialogue, but through teenage boys it's crapping on each other. It's and, so and it's dense with to, jokes that it leaves your head spinning. It's 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 the first thirty minutes of this movie or thirty of my favorite minutes of comedy, period. <laughs> it, it's it's perfection to me yeah, um, the but it, the movie does op- it opens with them talking about porn and yeah. the badgetastic voyage, voyage which is so, so funny but um it, it, it's it's such an interesting thing to open with because it is so crass and they talk about sucking your mama's boobies blah, 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 blah. but it it it, it does lead up to it almost again i heard seth talk about this he's almost wanted them to kind of introduce this core of like going to college and then have your average audience member forget about it and then bring it back later in the movie and maybe part of it is maybe you know this is a studio film it's not some indie film that they're trying to get people they wanted teenagers to go see this film they wanted high school seniors to go see this film right so I don't know, maybe you do have to kind of lure them in with the trailers. McLovin was played in the trailer so much, mm-hmm. and that's not the best joke of the movie. The conversation around that is the best joke, but the, yeah. the actual <laughs> McLovin is just I think, almost uh, an ex- and I feel like in a lesser movie, that would be the joke. Like you got McLovin, but they stretch <laughs> that out into like a two minutes of dialogue that is just, yeah. s- just brilliant scathing dialogue it was between that that muhammad could be a really (laughs) what the fuck yeah between that muhammad all of that (laughs) it's it's jonah hill's fucking shock (laughs) expression (laughs) that makes it just go overboard (laughs) (laughs) but also to your point it starts with them talking about porn to show just how fucking immature and naive they are about sex yeah, and how really out of the, their fucking depths they are about getting well, laid. Well, it's funny that they're like out of their depths, but then he does drop some knowledge because who's got a hand job in cargo shorts since? Oh now? yeah, that's true. Yeah, like one of the be- that's the be- one of my favorite lines, and it's uh, <laughs> said, I, yeah. He said, "I had, I got two dozen hand jobs and two thirds of a blowjob, but who's three counting? Three quarters of a blowjob. Yeah, yeah three quarters. <laughs> yeah, of a blowjob, but who's counting? <laughs> so." That there is a little bit of war there, like uh at some point he did get a little action before. So yeah, but you're not right. where he wanted, yeah. 
Do you feel like this is a sex positive movie? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely by is. the end. Because um, they end up still wanting to be with each other, both couples, and it's not like a whole drunk mistake thing. Well, also, yeah. the, the whole last act of the movie is it's Evan drunk, not, yeah, upset and like not comfortable uh, exactly. of having sex with Becca. Yeah. While they're and, fucked up. And like, because I think it, it rides the line between. I mean, that's, and we'll kind of, we'll I mean, we can talk about it now, but we'll get to it later. Um, of it, it rides the line of, of treating sex as important, but not trivially trivializing it and not treating it as too important, if that makes sense. Yeah. I do think there's almost an excess of sex positivity, I find sometimes, where it almost trivializes sex, you know, and fun and games and, or fun and games and stuff, but like the, it is also something that, a decision every time should be respected, and not well, not even with it, the question of um, uh, just sobriety. But you know, do I want to uh, do this with this person, have this connection, um, risk certain things? Or are you gonna well, it's funny because it's got like both sides to it. Because while Evan's like, "No, nah, I'm good." Old Fogel's here, like it's in, <laughs> like fucking <laughs> randoms, randoms after he gets arrested. Which is another like uh, <laughs> one. Of, like, it's almost like the climax of joke of the movie is that Fogel's the one who gets laid. Gets in laid. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, like <laughs> but uh, yeah, and not, to Evan's character, he uh, the whole time he's like are you is this okay are you good like are you okay and, just like and, peak michael Sarah. Like, yeah <laughs> but but you know and it's, it's interesting she's the one who's like why are you being such a little bitch about this and <laughs> i feel so bad um but yeah <laughs> definitely bad. sex positive but of course there's gonna be some trivialization you know and they're on a mission to lose their virginity before college i do think it it's also healthy that they do, even though this is clearly from the man's perspective, they do portray women as sexual beings and not being chase or virginal. You can you see know? the thong, man. You can see the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, which I think, and you know, as, as weird as it is, and you could argue, yeah. What's the difference between, there? what is the fine line between a movie being told um, from a male perspective and overusing or using the male gaze, you know, and objectifying. Um, and, and it all comes down to complexity of character, I guess, um, which you do get that development in the women characters, uh, which is another sure. reason why this works. It's not like, maybe this is a bad example, the princesses in Bill and Ted or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> well, that's a funny random ass thing. No, that's what I thought of. No, but I, I get that. I think that was that was honestly probably there just to make audiences know that they weren't gay. I've heard that they used to. No, be yeah, no, for sure. I think that's legitimately why they were in Bill and Ted. <laughs> it's like we can't have two guys being friends with no chicks. <laughs> People <laughs> think it's gay. It is gay. Okay. It's the male gaze, but the male gaze to the T, and it's not like it's. Yeah, it's not not self aware. Like- it's not overplayed like over sexually or anything where it's gross or anything. No, it's not. Yeah, it's just it's like, it's like how you Fucking... grow up. It's like, yeah, that's really relatable. Like you said, like you you're grow not gonna up like that. <laughs> Phoebe Cates climbing out of a fucking swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, no. Shit, but... yeah, it's just like, yeah, when um Evan is in class and he's staring at Becca's tits and she like looks over at him and he's just, you know, like, yeah, oh yeah, been there. Uh, I've been <laughs> there, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> fuck it. I mean, Go what are you gonna to deny? Game. That you weren't thinking about sex a lot when you were 16? Don't bullshit me. Well, yeah. It's like, like fucking, there's a thing, there's a phenomenon called high school horny for a fucking reason. It's my fucking guy. horrible. I think it's, it's a terrible, terrible thing. Terrible thing. I, it, it's like, God damn, it was a problem. <laughs> oh, it's amazing that I, I got any studying done that I yeah. ever did. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> you know, on, honestly, this- every. Anybody who gets a high school diploma is a goddamn hero. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that I goes told, for both, for all genders, I should I've say. I've told this story before. This is depraved, I guess. Tenth grade, the physical couch. science. I had to retake physical science because Mr. Garen failed me because I didn't do any of my homework. But uh, 
which is fair, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but and then I got the worst teacher, Ms. Nicewanger. I'm not going to fucking bleep her name because she's a bitch. She was a bitch to my fucking sister, too. Here's Fuck her me. address. Go and find her. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to dox her. No, but uh, I was taking a test that I had studied for, actually. And I, it was like 20 <laughs> minutes into this test, and I had only done two fucking, uh, fucking problems. And uh, I couldn't, for the life of me, focus on the test, and because I couldn't stop thinking about fucking TNA. It was horrible. <laughs> it was like I ha- I got like punched in the face that morning with like sex overdrive, fucking horrible. And five minutes passed, and I was like, I cannot focus on the test. Something has to be done. So, you know what yeah. I did? I, I raised my I raised my fucking hands went to the bathroom and in 30 seconds fucking shot one out into a fucking piece of tissue flushed it came back finished the test in 10 minutes and got a fucking 95 on that motherfucker (laughs) it's all been downhill since (laughs) our audience is gonna know you way too well i I don't give a fuck i already know at this point i was in 10th grade i don't give a shit there's not a lot of sacred cows in this podcast Come on, yeah. Who, you know, people, are, who, you know off, that's man. the only time I've jerked off in public. I'm sure some of y'all <laughs> have jerked liar. off in public. You're a liar. Oh yeah, I'm jerking off right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. You've jerked off at like work or at school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Anyway, um, let's talk about the structure of this movie. This movie has a pretty well defined three act structure. I yeah. would say. You have in the morning and at school. All right, Shakespeare. And then you have Shakespeare at a five act structure, motherfucker. So not Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Christ. But you have your, you very clearly have your first act at the school and during the day, which is, and then you have your second act, which is about an hour of the movie. And the first and third act are about 30 minutes each. A liquor run. Thir- the third act being basically when they arrive at the party. Um, which is you know the goal the the final party because there's yeah, the in between party <laughs> yeah no not the grease party we'll get to yeah that. I feel like yeah as soon as Fogel is arrested at the liquor store and Seth is hit by the car that's when shit fucking changes yeah that is that is the act break definitively um, and I feel the second act of this movie while still good is by far the weakest. I feel the the middle act of this movie by itself could be like an eight out of ten if we're gonna put like IGN numbers on it, eight and a half. And then but the first and the last act of this movie are damn near perfect for me. I love like the the middle, yeah, middle of this. Like the all the interactions with like Fogel and the cops and the fucking party that he goes to. My favorite scene in this whole movie is set at that party, and it's Michael Sarah awkwardly singing. Uh, these eyes, yeah, yeah, for me, yeah that, that is pivotal of uh, the whole part of the, <laughs> the adventure that. within the adventure. Uh, is mm-hmm. always been a fascinating thing to me where, like, the layers and character development you're trying to get to this too. place, and and I don't know. Uh, I love I'm John not- Ludriglio in it too, man. That character is just fucking great. Hey, man, no problems here. Like, you know, we, go to a party. we got liquor back at the place. I'm like, <laughs> he's great. He's a great comedic actor. Yeah, he's he's, he's so good at those roles. <laughs> <laughs> he's really good in Brooklyn Nine Nine as the best friend. Oh, um, yeah. I I feel like some of the stuff, some of the dialogue with the cops with Bill Hader and Seth Rogen is just not as tight as dialogue in the rest of the movie. I don't know, man. I think those two my, are probably my favorite I think parts that's of the probably movie. No, that's probably more where uh, more improv improving came in. It was. Oh, when you can tell. But uh, it, it, it sticks out. Slater and Michaels. For the but, rest uh, of the movie. Now, I'm not some, saying I don't enjoy it or it's not good. I know, I know. It's just I, um, I've always in, been into Seth Rogen's style of improv, especially like... Uh, yeah this is the end and shit like that. So I'm cool with it, especially when they're talking about uh, Hater's uh, wife that he met yeah. in the bar and shit. And he's um, like, I was there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, or does it almost take you out of the, I don't know, does it almost take you out of the movie though with how ridiculous no. those cops are? No, no, because 
they ground it in reality because uh, with them being aware of who Fogel really is the whole time and sitting yeah. down with him being cutting the bullshit, which is still a ridiculous premise. Yeah, but, but it's, like it's, it's it's heartwarming. They want to be if, cool. If cops. there wasn't that scene in the movie, then yeah, that, the whole cop shit would bug the shit out of me. No, it wouldn't work at all. Yeah. Also, this movie, I guess, is technically uh, copaganda. Yeah. Oh, God, I was waiting for the that. fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, for showing how incompetent the police are. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, I, I they two of my favorite parts of the movie. I, I love the whole adventure that Fogel goes on. Um, I still every, every now and then will fucking oh McMuffin the fucking cool <laughs> that the homeless guy just reappearing back on the fucking bus and destroying the I forgot about how dramatic some of the shots were, like especially that one when he yeah he dives for the gold it's like, yeah. so fucking over dramatic. <laughs> but like that's good. that's there how shit some... felt. That's how shit felt back then when you were oh, younger. Yeah. You know, still now like that one is true. small thing just feels like the whole world yeah. you know like to to him it's like oh this alcohol is shattered that means there is now a big roadblock in me getting laid she when, didn't even fucking remember yeah like, yeah it's so funny because that's just, remember. That, that's right sam that's how shit was back then like just think of it rationally be rational for one second and be like oh uh sorry we forgot it. no big deal you know yeah dude huh. That's funny how the mind worked. Yeah. Like, think about it. It's a whole movie. Like, if I mean, they could have given up at any point if they thought rationally about the whole alcohol and then just showed up and said, well, it couldn't work. But no, that, I mean, that wouldn't, you know, you'd get something else entirely. But yeah. Yeah. They uh, already, yeah. You know, they're like, no, but we could find this fit mill. Um, well, <laughs> Jesus, that's that's the 2022 version. <laughs> but the, um, no, it's, uh, it's I, like, you talk about the mind working just like, the amount of anxiety Seth has about going to the liquor store and like imagining him getting his fucking throat slashed by the <laughs> Oh, that's the shit too. Like when I said it was like over dramatic. Like I love that, that scene there when it's like three different outcomes. <laughs> the first time I watched that movie, I was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> this movie is really cinematic in parts though, yeah. to yes. Matola's credit, more so than most comedies of this era yes. in other Aptow. I mean, you have like, well, no, that's Adam McKay. I was about to say Talladega Nights. Um, but even like 40-year-old version, it has its moments. It has Age of Aquarius. Um, but Yeah, but uh, yeah, there are definitely some good cinematic choices. And Knocked Up, which I actually really like Knocked Up, just because I kind oh, of identify yeah, with the, I like parent, Knocked up. the parenthood anxieties part of it. Um, <laughs> but Yeah, what did your wife do? <laughs> my waifu <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, I know it has a good mix of like blending these like real moments into like some cinematic like pineapple express has it and like yeah all these other movies are like similar and it's you nice. got the slow-mo you have more than just over the shoulder shots yeah you know there's sets there's establishing shots it's these sounds basic. like simple things but sometimes I feel like certain comedies are lacking those cinematic yeah. graphic elements. Because comedy, um, also, and horror I, it's a are the colorful movie. It's a yeah. colorful, colorful movie. Yeah, and it's not it one of those like cheap like mid two thousands. Uh, See, that's what I'm saying. Like movie. horror movies and comedy movies are the cheapest to film because you don't yeah. need a lot of production, and a lot of that you have inexperienced or lazy filmmakers, like you said, where you don't have the like just the same shots back and forth. So, you know. Any like Apatow produced or McKay stuff, you know, has more quality to it than just, you know, like an early two. Yeah, but I think comedy. this even compared to a lot of Apatow. Like and I think, again, script. because it is a tightly written script, as opposed to Apatow or Adam McKay, they they get too much improv in their mm -hmm. script. Yeah. And it drags it down. That's for sure. That's for sure. Especially shit. as it goes along. Like you compare, um, you compare. This is 40. Yeah, this is 40 to uh 40 year old version, you know. Or uh knocked up. Knocked up is pretty heavy with some improv. But uh damn, yeah, this is 40. What about to Wet Hot time. American Summer. That's a good one. I fucking love that movie so fucking much. Yeah, but that's not that's not, improv. It's not it's like a different boat in terms I know, of I was just thinking games. about it. Did did we do that on this podcast or were we gonna do it and we ended up not doing it? I mean, uh, we never summer done series that. next year. That's like a top five comedy for me. Wow. Really? 
Yeah, I've watched that movie probably like 60 times. I love that Jesus. movie. That was a comfort movie for me. And have you watched all the, the oh, sequel yeah. and the Netflix and all that? All of it. It's uh, huh. it's how fucking stupid those movies are and TV series is what fucking gets me going, dude. It's I'll say so like, dumb. If, if there's like related back to this movie, if there's any one character or actor that I've always felt akin to, it's always been Michael Sarah, just like for his awkwardness. I've always considered myself like a blend of Jack Black and Michael Sarah. So like that's just where I get that like <laughs> that humor, that weird awkwardness, you know. And what I like too about Superbad is that you can see parts of like I saw parts of my friends at the time when we watched it, like in the movie, like uh like Fogel reminds me of, you know, a certain friend we all have. And <laughs> You know, they're like parts of like you and Ev- or in Seth, parts of me and For Evan. Sure. And, you know, you just you see like, oh, those are like people I know or, you know, and I still it's, see it now. Like it reminded of it reminded me of how I was in high school or middle school when it came out. And, you know, my thoughts going into the future and shit. So sure. It's definitely a movie where you can do, you know, how people do with certain like pop groups like I'm, I'm not even talking like your quit online quizzes, but like which Spice Girl, or which Beetle are you, or which yeah, you can, be like, which you can easily do that with this movie. Like, I would say, you know, Tasher and Adrian are much more Seth, and then you know, you and me, Sam, are much more Evan. Um, we can do that, and then thankfully, none of us are Fogel. No, uh, I know. <laughs> Although he's the one who gets laid, so I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. maybe I should. That's what I could say about a certain person we know. I didn't get laid in high school, so fuck it. I didn't even try. I uh, I got laid in high school. <laughs> Congratulations! And my left hand was my best friend in high school. Um, shout yeah. out. Yeah, shout out if you're listening. No, 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 no. We won't name you, but I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I was uh, I had the you know the the experience of having a fucking girlfriend for the majority of my high school. And now I've been single for five years. So, yeah. <laughs> it all evens out cosmically. It all evens out. <laughs> Speaking of girlfriends, I should there, there is I do think there is truth, kind of, in what Seth said of the almost karmic role in sexual um achievement, how he got too much action early in his career. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, oh no, there's no then, fucking truth in that. I get laid when I don't fucking want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Magnum, uh, it's true, but, uh, I have a I have a woman I keep in my closet. She's not alive. Oh. Um, she's made wow, out of good job. She's Jesus made out Christ. of different things. I have to and change out her uh, her hand Parts. that I have to do. It rot, yeah, it rots every few days. Wow, so I just keep a fucking a good dick, Cashier. Holy shit! Damn, what you should write for thing. SNL. That was yeah. so unfunny. You should write for SNL. <laughs> no, that's the funniest story I've ever heard. Can you tell it again? Wow, I guess it's just fuck me today, right? No, I'm yeah, because you like getting fucked so much, apparently. That was a quote from, yeah, oh, yeah, you're good, good one, yeah, guys. But, um, good too. Uh, fuck this podcast, I'm out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> would it be po- would it even be possible to like, does period blood go through the pants and onto other pants? If like, how bad do you have enough? to be? It's got to be heavy. That's a heavy flow. That's a heavy flow. And the best part of that scene is the random shit he says, where he says, it could have been a ricochet effect. I don't know. Like, what <laughs> yeah. the fuck does that mean? He just bounces off. Bounces it's off a weird, like, high weird. Concept like, shit. He, even that reveals character, you could argue, because it yeah. shows the stupidity, stupidity of teenage. Like, I didn't bullshit. realize periods happen until... I like had a girlfriend and she got period cramps. I was like, oh yeah, that exists for half the population. It was just what? like really? didn't... You, <laughs> what? Okay. you didn't think periods happen? <laughs> I didn't believe them, you know, it was kind of like Bigfoot. Hey, how many holes are there? <laughs> it's like Mr. Garrison of South Park. I don't believe anything that bleeds for seven days and doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> now uh Jesus, I didn't realize you didn't. I don't know, that's just mind but I mean, me. I mean, uh, I knew it exa- I'm exaggerating, but it was, okay. just, it was like didn't hit home. Yeah, that's you know, yeah, because I didn't have yeah. sisters growing up or anything. Yeah. First time having to deal with it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, um, I showed my sister this movie when she was like 16. And you know, she's a different age group. So I wanted to see and she's a, a woman and she's completely she's a zoomer. 
she's eight years younger than me. So I wanted to see how she liked it and if she if she could get into it. She loved it. She thought it was great. What about your brother? And then my brother has not seen that movie. He's a little um too young for that movie. I was gonna say, well, I think I'm saying later. I'm saying later. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We can come back to the super bad in a couple years. And then I, I watched it with Parker and people listening. That's my girlfriend, and she um Oh Adrian's got a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fucking divine intervention. But um <laughs> and she really enjoyed it. And then we watched it again at some rent. We went over to her friend's house, and her boyfriend was like the stereotypical like film nerd. And he was like, so, so me, let's all watch a movie right now, which for me, I can do, you know, I can just throw on shit. Let's watch this movie. Okay. Parker isn't built like that, you know? And, and he, I looked at his collection. I jokingly, he's like, let's put on a movie. I'm going to put on a movie. What should we watch? And, uh, I jokingly saw, I looked at his collection. I jokingly said, Oh, let's watch Stalker. And he's like, Oh, yeah, okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's he, a great hangout like, movie. <laughs> I waited until he went over to grab the two hour and 40 minute Russian film. And until I was like, Dog, no, I was just kidding. We're not watching Stalker right now in your bedroom on this futon. And, <laughs> and Parker was like, like Jesus. It's funny, like I laugh at like that now, but I'm also that type of person that I know, but like, dude, like <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude, like you're scaring the hose. And, uh, and um, <laughs> so he went to Netflix, and I, I was like, I just, I was like, just throw on Super Bad because you know I knew Parker's seen it, and you know it's a comedy, you just throw it on in the background. And uh, but it was like it was supposed to be like a background movie. But then we all started like paying attention to it because it's just irresistible. And that's when it like really hit for Parker was the second time watching. I feel like comedies are a second time a lot for me too. Um, sometimes I'll watch a movie. I'm like, you know, that was all right. It was like that for uh, Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles for me. The first time I watched it, I was like, okay, whatever. The second time I was like, oh, fuck, this is incredible. Yeah, yeah Brooks is the shit. I, uh, well, and too, when it's stuff like that, when it like verges on like parody or spoof, you can appreciate it more as it doesn't feel like a knockoff or something sometimes. Well, sure. On a different view. Like, the depth of the humor and the jokes in Superbad is just endlessly it's rewarding. Like yeah. The depth of the Sepstone dressing joke. <laughs> <is> pretty deep. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, like I said, like, I know, I'm just giving you shit. Oh, but you, laid, you need the joke. Seth's own dressing jokes yeah, takes... to propel forward the scene and the narrative and to explain yeah. these guys' emotions and then get to those really witty jokes. I will say this might be the most quotable movie I've ever watched because I've quoted, yeah. I, I still quote this shit. Like, I'll still say, if anybody says I'll scratch your back, you'll scratch them. I'll be like, funny thing, <laughs> yeah. back back <laughs> back <laughs> like, I still say that shit and like, uh, no, people don't forget whenever, fucking yeah, well, I'd, right I'd say that for sure because, like, I was looking at what Redder, Letterbox had to say about it, and like, the majority of the reviews were just like lines from the film. I'm like, yep, <laughs> yeah. makes sense, and they and all have like uh, 2,000 likes. I'm like, damn, and you get so many wide types of the comedy you get gross out, you get improv, you yeah. get tightly scripted, almost screwball, witty comedy, you get situational, you get slapstick with people getting hit by cars or whatever. Um, punch so face. it's all there there's it's every out of, out of nowhere too, yeah. this is a four quadrant movie when it comes to comedy <laughs> you know like it hits every comedy quadrant you can imagine except for maybe people with melanin but that's you know it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> there's white. an asian character no you got the there's one asian character you got the cashier lady who his name is fucking maroki too like come on yeah, they, they <laughs> he's, one of my he's got one of the best fucking little little bits too where he's just like <laughs> think, yeah, they have to make him a cat girl. Like, what am I going to need to make tiramisu? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fucking I do want to talk about. I'm sorry, yeah, I wish I learned how to make tiramisu If you can, if you make tiramisu, that's impressive to shit. Like all yes. I learned how to make in home ec was spaghetti and eggs, and I knew how to make spaghetti and eggs. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's a, well, that's the California uh, public schooling system. They know how to. I mean, we made like yeah, sugar cookies, but we didn't make tiramisu. I, uh, I would like to make detail. like trace leches or something like yeah, that. like the subtle what detail of the uh, the the tiramisu, his and Jules looking like shit, and then 
Evans is like Morofi, picture perfect. First <laughs> yeah. bought it from a bakery. Yeah. <laughs> so. I want to talk about like there's a lot of young talent in this that just kind of gets launched from this. Yeah. Like yeah, you got so. ooh, Emma Clark Stone Duke. and fucking no, Jonah kidding. Hill. A uh, Dave Franco makes an appearance in this. He does make like, an appearance. Fucking, this. there's a ton of Emma Stone. I think the, only one of the main cast that doesn't really do shit is Michael or Christopher Mintz Plass. Like I haven't seen him in a whole but lot. He's been, he's been active. He's been yeah, in he's, stuff. He's been in a lot. He's been in shit like not super recent. Um, I'm, I met him at a music festival. Oh yeah, really? Tell you that. Electric Forest in Michigan. Uh, yeah. My buddy was wearing a wizard's costume, and it's not just like a regular wizard's costume. The like KKK like, was its costume. Giant hat that goes over the top part of his head, and then a face makes up the body, and then it's like a, yeah, I've seen those. Well, he like ran up to Christopher Mintz Plast during a fucking Matisse Yahoo set and scared the absolute shit out of him. I think Christopher was fucking tripping. Um, so that's my little connection story there. But uh, I do think Clark there's a lot of talent. Duke is awesome. it, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Clark Duke's in it. It's crazy the amount of fucking people that are in this that uh, have pretty great careers now. Yeah, the lady, like, the Becca, she's not really in anything. Think, of, no, I don't think either, about it. Well, uh, you, you say that, but then you look at her IMDb. She's been in Battle of the Sexes, which also has Emma Stone. She was in Last House on the Left, which and stuff. She was in I mean, I Family Guy. Voice, she's done voice work. <laughs> Christopher Mintz Plass has done a lot of voice work. They're all working. Yeah, no, it's just, yeah, we just haven't seen him in a while. It's been a little bit. I've, most I've seen him he, in a like, He like, was, played himself in the uh, this Far Cry right. 3 advertisements. Oh, yeah. I was oh, just, yeah. yeah. Advertisements, and I saw him as, like, the dude that has the big dick and neighbors. He's also uh, in, like, This is the End for, like, a little bit. Oh, oh This is the End is, yeah. I yeah. love that movie. But, uh, I, mean, um, I need to re- I've only seen it once. I need to rewatch it. What? It's a great movie. I, saw I think it he, I know. Times, he's, yeah, he's easier to typecast, too, because he's such a dorky-looking dude. You know, he looked so Sarah's... young for the longest time. He looked like a fucking baby for the longest time. He did. I mean, he Michael Cera, he looks kind of like dorky. his villain role in Kick-Ass, too. <laughs> but he can... Oh yeah, the he, role, wasn't, he wasn't kick ass. I was gonna say the role that he has in fucking role models right after Superbad, he's like pushing close to his 30s, like mid 20s at least. Maybe. And he's playing a kid who's like 17. Unless he's gonna really, curse. Yeah, it's like it's, it's so he's like he looks like a baby, and he doesn't look much as like a baby anymore. He grew a beard, um, which is I guess nice, but I'd like to see him in more. You know, I saw this is the end four times in tears. Casher saw it like 12 times. <laughs> I saw a lot, dude. I saw a lot too. I was working at the movie theater, and then they that, re-released, re-released that and that. Sausage Party. I saw like at least eight words. I hate times about... Party. I was fucking. I did not like that movie. Yeah, I've, I haven't heard a lot of good things about Sausage I was, Party. I was stoned out of my mind when I first saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is, it was like a cinematic achievement. I almost compared it to like Saw. I was like, this is the second best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> oh and I saw it like eight fucking times. This I'll is like you, other man. classic criteria on movies, like Saw. <laughs> I still need to see Saw just for your sake, Sam. Yeah, Sawcast. Let's do it. The, uh, you know, one of my favorite tidbits about the movie is that um, tidbits. <laughs> yeah, Jonah Tidbit. Hill. While they were doing casting, told uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, he's like, I do not like this guy, Chris Mintz Plass. He's like, do not cast this guy in here. I don't like him. It's something off about him. He annoys the shit out of me. And then they were like, this is why we're casting him in the fucking part. And he and and I totally get that. What a good choice. Was, I wonder if they kind of got used to each other. He was they did. Weird, they yeah. did, definitely. They did. It's it's uh I heard Mintz Plass, he was 17 when this was filming. So in the scenes where he's naked in yeah, the to have his whatever, parents there with him. Yeah, to have his mom there, his yeah. Filming. Well, Which, that's I that's did. fun when you I love your parents man. to watch you film that scene. Yeah. yeah, watch you say it's in. <laughs> uh, Seth wrote, or not Seth wrote, but uh, fucking Jonah Hill. I, I think it was like he's just always had a rough time with Hollywood too, and just in general. Uh, and I guess this movie like kind of started, kick started that, and him being in the public eye. And now he's like not even wanting to do publicity for movies anymore. So I mean, good for him for taking a stand. These people keep giving sure. him shit about being healthy now. Like yeah, it's, it's so fucked up. It's uh, it does suck whenever you have lost weight and they're like, oh, you look so great, and it's like, oh, I guess I looked like shit before. Yeah, yeah. But, like I watched it, so many interviews with him where he's just being put down, and it's just yeah, it gets to you. It, it's it's terrible, and then it, it's weird because you you but now it hurts your career. You lose roles. 
like Jack Black has talked about it. And what's his name? Um, I always forget. He's in My Name is Earl and Mall Rats. Big dude, fat dude. Real Ethan fat dude. Supley. Ethan Supley is jacked now. Like, holy crap. Ripped. Yeah, he um, was in the Quarry video game. Absolutely scary. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, but he he says, yeah, I have to play completely different types of roles now. And it's actually been pain. Me and my, you know, manager, agent, or whoever have really had to work. Huh. That. Yeah, I get that. Also, yeah, you know, I'm sure when Jonah Hill was doing press junkets in these movies in the late 2000s, early 2010s, people probably, you know, they treated him like the funny fat guy, I'm That's sure. That's what they called him, too, the funny yeah, fat guy. Then, you know, um, like the one interview I watched, they were like, how do you feel about not being the funny fat guy anymore? He's like, that hurts. And they're like, no, it doesn't That's hurt. you Laugh it off. Like, no, like. That's why comedians, you know, are the most depressed people. Well, that's the thing. I don't think Seth, I don't think he ever considered himself a comedian. He was always an actor. Yeah, he's an actor. Like, yeah. He's a, he yeah, has comedic you know saying, roles, though. but like... Did you guys see mid-90s? I didn't see it. I yeah, loved I it. I, I thought it was a really good directorial debut. Um, we had an hangout movie. The funniest Very thing, good. though, we about the press junkets for this movie, we've talked about this on the podcast, but when they went to Spain, the title was, for some reason completely changed to super horny nice and like they're like what the fuck and it was like really awkward and there was like some chick on the poster who wasn't even in the movie and stuff because it was the voice actress for emma stone's character who only is i mean she's only in a handful of scenes in this movie anyway but <laughs> super <see>. horny <laughs> oh yeah salito means sticking out because um Salir means to exit. So it's like super protruding boner. That's what it is. Sick. <laughs> and so people, and now I've been to Madrid, you know, I've been to Madrid, but they're much more accepting of the gays now. But apparently in the mid to late 2000s, they booed at the homoeroticism of friendship. That's one thing. People always talk about the homoeroticism and things like this or other I mean, in literary example, a separate piece, which is much more, it's more. <laughs> that's a gay ass book. That's, 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 a gay <laughs> book. but the, um, I, I really like that book. It really I do too. I that's 15. a good book. Yeah. I don't know if I'm, how much I, I haven't read it since I was 15. Holy I, I read it in that. one sitting when I was 15. I was that into it. That was my favorite book for a while. Um, but I almost feel like there's a certain age, and, and some people never age out of this. I mean, it's a generational thing where it's like, you're a man, the only way you're kind of allowed to express your emotions or love is through sex. So that's where you get like dudes like slapping each other's ass or like making jokes about like, oh, you're gay, da da da. Because I almost feel like it's not even that they have sexual tension with each other. They may, but it's not even necessarily that. It's like you almost don't know how else to express yourself other than in these sexual terms, if that well, makes any sense. Yeah, thankfully things are better now. 2000s was the height of homophobia in pop culture and just in culture in general and well, it, it was what it was i think it was things were getting more accepted you even had things like queer eye for the straight guy which doesn't i don't know if that helps to dispel stereotypes about gay men but the um i think it, it's, the public didn't really know how to react to well it. you had the backlash and we, we're yeah. all from arkansas first of all um so there's that yeah. But it, the thing is, you had more accepting and like people coming out and like gay marriage actually well starting to get legalized or like talks mm -hmm. of legalization. So you did have that backlash. And uh, fortunately, everything's fine now. <laughs> yeah, there's no <laughs> more homophobia. Thing. There's no social unrest. You no, know, what I'm saying all is, the though, is that the film, it doesn't um, do that like 2000s thing where it's like, oh, no homo. It's just like, yeah, friends can be endearing and loving to each other they don't treat it like when they're cuddling in the fucking basement it's not like they go oh just kidding i'm not getting you know like uh, right uh, no homo i want to bring or, i want to bring back no homo ironically it's like they realize that you know well, really exactly like just, it it's a very it endearing friendship and friendships can be intimate if they want to be yeah. and, oh, yeah. and it's it's important for kids to see it's important it's in that they just it was just a normal thing. It wasn't like yeah. played off as like a joke. It was a cutesy kind of joke, like oh, normalize your bromances. Yeah, but like completely okay. It was completely opposite of what all these lowbrow boner movies that were coming around out of the time, you know. Yeah, 
the boner and movies that only had like they you think that the movie would have lost no would you have lost more respect for the movie if at the end they were laying together and like the last line of the movie is like no homo bro and it cuts <laughs> and then they fuck no <laughs> <laughs> This is this Kevin Smith's joke about Return of the King about Frodo and Sam going at it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I think um, this movie would be better if Kevin Smith directed it. Okay, yeah. let's relax here. Um, <laughs> I, I like directing Clerks 3, so right, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that I'm, I'm gonna see, see it. it. You know, I mean, I of have course to. I'm gonna see it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but uh. I'm not here to talk about Clerks 3 right now. No, not Where's yet. Our, where are we going to drop the Marvel reference and Star Wars reference? Oh, the, no, we're not. Not. Stop. That was it. Who do you guys think Jonah Hill's going to play in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? No, I'm glad uh, he's uh, he's doing his own directing shit. I am too, man. I, I'm excited to see what he's got. In the, yeah, I, I, really I really love Moneyball. Uh, I really that's... liked uh, mid-90s, like his big directorial debut, and I'm really happy to see that he's making like thoughtful movies um which you know mid 90s seems like it's not gonna be a thoughtful movie but it's very much like a really good coming of age like hang it's out. kind of fucking intense yeah i've heard like, that yeah. and it makes me want to see it i held off at first because it was called mid 90s and i was like well, well, well this look, is just look, nostalgia Scott, it's it, it's not a perfect movie but i can appreciate what he's going yeah, for sure. it's definitely it's a little run. It, yeah, it's a little shaky because it's his first run as a director you know but uh if you liked kids you'd like this yeah, and also, one. also the kid in that movie plays uh, Atreus in God of War 2018. Does he really? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's ah. the same dude. Look that, at it. The character that's boy? Is the same and everything. Boy, boy. Yeah, that's yeah, him. Um, he also directed a music video for Vampire Weekend. Uh, Sunflower. Which is pretty sick. Which, uh, oh. <laughs> has he, a, uh, he had uh, Jerry Seinfeld hanging out on set of that music video. And then there's like a shot at the end of that music video where the fucking guy who must like work at the fucking Jewish sandwich shop that they're at. Cause he's like, Joe, uh, <laughs> he's like, Jerry, I got a, I got a bit for you. And Jerry's like, Oh, great. <laughs> and, he, and he says the fucking joke. And then I don't know. It's just a really good ending. Cause Jerry's just like, why the fuck do I do these things? But um, well, it's like, uh, he's been in the media a lot lately because he's been discussing his mental health. And I think that's, dope that he's able to really come out and talk about it because he talks about all the panic attacks and yeah like anxiety that just promotion like he's not gonna do promotional work that's for always movie. important and i think it's really awesome of him to be like, no fuck it i refuse no more press junkets yeah i mean he's uh <laughs> have you ever seen the there's a meme it's like uh it's a video of like leonardo it's like jonah hill standing drinking his coffee and dicaprio runs at him like on the street and like yeah. scares the shit out of him because he thinks he's a fan he, yeah he thinks he's like, a weirdo fan yeah well it's like i feel like that's probably how most of his interactions are in terms yeah. of like real life uh, i want to see what he's got coming up if he has reminds any... me of the adam sandler uncut gems meme picture <laughs> yeah well let's see yeah. i, wanna see what I watched a movie movies. i think earlier this year that i put off but I've talked about it on the podcast briefly, but um, War Dogs, which was surprisingly good. Did you like it? I don't like yeah. it. Really. I thought it was movie. fine. I, 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 I thought, I thought it, was it was good. I know how Sam feels about Miles Teller, but uh, I thought it was good. And <laughs> you, I, you hate Miles Teller? Yeah, he hates him. Actor. <laughs> you don't think he's a good actor? No, I just don't like him. Okay. Jonah yeah, Hill is good in that movie. I had to watch it because they fucking... I will say, you know, they make Albania look like fucking dog shit. Yeah, but, like the uh, truth. No, they they weren't even fil- <laughs> they were filming in fucking Turkey, which made me feel better. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bleak. No, yeah. tur- Turkey Turkey has some problems. We'll just say that. <laughs> Our uh-huh. government is a uh, has done some not chill stuff the past few years. The uh, the the payoff of super bad of this whole time he's trying to get liquor. So Jules will sleep with him and she doesn't even drink that reveal is so important. And, and it's what makes it almost like what makes the movie, you know, he doesn't sleep with her. He doesn't get his way and he explains it, but 
her not drinking is such a fucking good, I don't know, good writing bit, I guess. I don't know. Simple reversal of expectations. Yeah. That's all it is. And Ryan it only Johnson characterizes though. Jules and opposites kind of attract because it's weird. It's normal. A lot of the time you see in comedies, especially like the fat dude with a hot out of his league girl, da, 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 that sort of thing. But for some reason in Superbad, they have enough chemistry where you buy it. And yeah. Also cause, and also because Seth, we, we've gotten to like him so much, despite him being like a douche. Like we've gotten to like him so much because he's obviously so smart and funny and weirdly mature despite his immaturity um, and, and his just ability to navigate the world. But um, you completely buy it that Emma Stone, this, you know, she was strong to consider him. a dime piece, um, does it. Yeah, she was strong by him, even in the first interaction in the home egg. Yeah. You know. Seth, I want to blow you. <laughs> <laughs> but, I uh you talk about the reversal of expectations. Maybe uh they're taking a little bit from the uh classic movie Shallow How. Uh have you guys ever seen that? Nah. We where where Jack Black still likes fat Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, it's literally about a movie where a guy thinks he's like denying fat women. It's Jack Black denying fat women, and then he's cursed to see all fat women as attractive women. Mm-hmm. And that he's still attracted to a fat woman at the end. What? Even without the curves. And also, instead of just getting a fat actress, they're like, we don't want a fat actress. We want Gwyneth Paltrow in a fat suit. Uh, <laughs> it's gnarly. It's it's it's, uh, it's it's got fucking uh, Jason Alexander in it being like the worst piece of shit. Worse than Costanza. Like piece of <laughs> shit. Oh, dude, uh, well, he's not neurotic Costanza. He's just a misogynist. Yeah, he's just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next podcast. Uh, dude, I'm, 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 seeing, I'm seeing a good chunk of it on cable. I, That's, I've watched that movie a lot, actually. My dad what? likes because my dad likes that movie. Okay, <laughs> it's fucking stupid. There's a scene where like your dad's your dad identifies with Jason Alexander. I guess, <laughs> man. Uh, shout out to his stepmom. I guess my dad um, used to, like um, but uh. There's a scene in that movie where, like, Gwyneth Paltrow's, like, all sexy, and she takes her panties off, and it comes to fucking Jack Black. She throws her panties, and it's supposed to be, like, tiny, but he opens them up, and they're, like, this big. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> that's, that's so dumb. Crazy. It's so shit crazy. <laughs> up. It's so many old... I'm sorry. I was watching... I don't know why. I watched The Hot Chick with Rob Schneider on cable the other day. Why? <laughs> dude, dude. <laughs> and it was it was like the fat character the fat woman character has like a, a foot long sub in every shot like she's always eating something i'm telling you dude the way that like sam is obsessed with like b-movie horror and shit i like shitty comedies like that you do, i've really watched do. a fucking lot they just they're so fucking stupid the jokes are so bad that they just cra- like i like the hot chick i like another rob schneider classic the animal like that would be but so also cool. really think about uh 2000s comedies like that and, and then you compare it to super bad and super i was gonna bad. say shout out to yeah, super bad super bad so fucking like that all the time Good. I thought like the trailers for it made it seem like it was gonna be just like all the other like road trip, Euro trips. So I hate almost. crass so much. But it has <laughs> class. Crass oh, with God class. That is, yeah. it, that's that's the name of the podcast. <laughs> crash crash. Crash. Uh, the, yeah, no, this is like, we we, we often lament the death of the studio comedy, but how much did we really lose? We lost like one good movie a year and then a lot I, of shit. Guilty pleasures, true. mom, my friend. I like to get fucking. R-word. I like stupid. Yeah. I I don't believe in guilty pleasures anymore. I like stupid comedies. I like Grandma's yeah, Boy. Too. I like shit. I like, like Grandma's that. Boy. I like the uh, American Pie movies. I like fucking American Pie. I've Pie never seen Pie. American Pie. The first oh, American man. Pie is the only one I've seen, but it, it was fun. Best, no. American uh, Pie Bandcamp is the best. I like uh, not another. I like uh, not another teen movie. <laughs> I've seen parts of that on TV. It's bad yeah, movies. Like uh, Wet Hot American Summers is my top five comedies of all time. Like I like stupid shit. We should like, do uh, just all like the fucking date movie, disaster movie, all those. Uh, you can uh, fucking pay me. That's like I can watch. Like, that, those, you, but no, I mean that you might as well just film us sucking on a tailpipe because that'll be the same <laughs> effect. Just killing our brain cells with carbon monoxide. Man, 
on the Wet Hot American and Summer. Seltzer universe. There's no. a fucking there's a fucking scene in a Wet Hot American Summer just to establish how stupid this is for our audience, where he's on a fucking motorbike, he's being chased by the fucking van, and there's a hay bale in the middle of it, and he fucking jumps over it. And then the other guy can't go over the hay bale or get around it. So he stops and he's like, I'll get you next time. And he zooms away. It's just <laughs> fucking stupid shit like that, man. You got Christopher Maloney talking, like making really weird sus comments in the middle of conversations about his nipples. And then they're like, what? And then he Great explains his fucking it's, stuff like that just fucking gets me. And I thought Superman was going to be like that and ended up being so much fucking more than that. And I'm glad it was. Yeah. I want to talk about the ending of the movie. After, uh, no oh, the mid credit scene when they reveal that there's that uh, a Tony Stark is building an Avengers. <laughs> the fuck up! <laughs> when Nick Fury walks up and he's like, "You think you're the only horny teenager in town?" <laughs> he needs McLovin. <laughs> they go and they have fucking Jason Biggs from American Pie with him. <laughs> Steve Carell. I'm starting the a horny initiative. <laughs> It's just the horny Avengers. I love no, but, um, when I was in middle school. <laughs> the uh, the movie ends with the next day of them settling. They had already settled their differences about going to college, different colleges, and you you, you see that Seth is he's kind of upset that Evans going to the same school as Fogel and um, and, and rooming together. And rooming together. But like rimming together. They have like one last hurrah together by going to the mall. And of course, this isn't the last time they see each other in you know their the relationship friends. has changed. They, they still have the the summer, but poetically the way they go their separate ways with the girls is uh, foreshadow to their lives because uh, you know, if you're a, an adult, you know how sometimes these things just go that way. You know, people nope. go their separate ways, and, and so sometimes they come back. It watching rewatching the movie as an adult, that ending scene actually gets me emotional, and the way they take the time, especially they take the time to look back at each other, but the, you know. And just relating that to like, wow, that's how life goes. Yeah, uh, there's people from high school that I considered to be best friends with and I haven't seen them in a fucking decade, you know. It's just how it is. Life's weird that way. But way she fucking goes. Way she goes, yeah, exactly. And it's a weirdly poetic, beautiful ending to a fucking sex comedy. And that what that's what drives it home to me is like a masterpiece and one of my favorite films of all time. I don't know. What a wild movie. I would give this movie a 4 out of 10. Okay. <laughs> I would I give, give it a 6.9. I'm going to give it a, a, a six-day-old stale popcorn. <laughs> I'd give it's it... a great movie. It, it's, and I think, I think at this point, it's been oof, 14 years or whatever, 15, 15. years. It's I would still yeah. holds up. I, I would say it holds up. It's also of its time, but in a good way. And I, I would call it a classic and one of my favorite movies. I don't know. Yeah, it's, definitely, yeah. it's definitely in my top like 25 to 50. Yeah, it's in my top 3,000. It's, it's just one. <laughs> okay, Sam. <laughs> what? That, no, the fuck. <laughs> that was me. I know, but like Sam has like all this like yeah. long ass list of shit. No, yeah. Sam, you're you're like a I don't know a savant. You know what you want to say? Yeah. You want to say <laughs> autistic? Uh, um, I can neither confirm nor deny. That. <laughs> it's okay. I, mean, I, I still don't can, think uh, I still don't think I'm not. So I mean, it's all right. we, can have, we can have an <laughs> autism cast. Either. We can have an autism cast, but you guys have to sit through at least a three hour podcast of me explaining One Piece lore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we'll have that cast. You'll you'll talk about that, and then I'll talk about fucking um, <laughs> the Omni Mover ride system. From <laughs> I knew World. It's going Disney World. <laughs> Omni Mover ride system. What from Disney World? And, you know, Disneyland. <laughs> You're just gonna talk about Neon uh, Genesis. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, that, that we've already done that cast. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a pretty fucking long cast too. Was, yeah, it was. It was that's one. that's another great coming of age, but completely different. 
coming of age three times, maybe. Yeah, coming over Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh yeah anyway <laughs> i was trying to think of like some uh teenage stories to relate to super bad with but none like of that. our lives part of it, we, i always bring this up when we do teen movies part of what i find interesting how li- i don't relate to a lot of this what i relate to most is them hanging out and like watching movies and stuff not going out not parties i didn't do that i didn't, I didn't really drink I do remember staying up to the wee hours of the movie, hanging out, and like my freshman sure. year of college. With I used to go a lot of fucking parties in high school. Well, yeah, I mean, you and I both did. I'm trying to remember how the fuck we got alcohol. How did we uh, get uh, alcohol back then? We, we had a Bud Lager for one. Um, we used to pay a dollar a fucking Bud Light. Uh, also, oh, yeah, my dad. Not... Also, my dad. A lot of the time, I'd raid my dad's liquor. I know, but like we would go to parties and we would bring fucking like quality house and shit. I don't remember. We how. also had. Fucking scumbag John Comfort. <laughs> Shout out to the 25-year-old guy who hung out with 17-year-olds like us. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. I uh, hope oh, fucking some. Oh, that reminds guy. me. I have to go to a party at uh, high school tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Uh, when yeah, I was... hit the prom after parties. <laughs> yeah, when I turned 25 three years ago i was thinking about that i was like imagine hanging out with fucking 12th graders no <laughs> it's insane i'm hanging out with college students we, yeah, no, uh, I, no, I didn't want to hang out with college students past the age of like 22 yeah, yeah. we we hey mister a few times uh, I, I remember yeah, cole yeah. successfully doing it once when we went to Maumel and it worked i was like holy shit finally um, a lot of times we'd so show up and it would be we would there just already be. Hard. I know, yeah, but I just we would hit to... like we would hit fucking Cavenders out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of time where I was hanging out with like Chris Canada and good old Reese Schaefer, and I would follow them to parties. <laughs> um, shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to Reese Schaefer, that fucking loser who made liquor reviews on YouTube. Yeah, I, uh, Me and Cody made fun of it so much that he shut the channel down. Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah, wow, fun. today we're the, the night we're recording this is the night, the last day of summer for kids where we live. Yeah, we go back to school tomorrow, which reminds me of this weekend in twelfth grade. We went to Cavenders, and for some reason, I thought to go all out. And this is the worst I'd ever been drunk. And I've never been this bad drunk ever since. And as soon as I got there, five minutes and out there, I just decided to take as many shots as I could back to back. And so I just went boom, boom, boom. That was my first party boom. in college. I took 16 shots in fucking five minutes. <laughs> That's that, exaggeration. Kids, no. Kids do not do that. No fucking way. Because... 10 minutes after that, I could not remember anything but vague images. And I remember I passed out in the bathroom like 10 minutes after that and uh, hit my head on the fucking ground, I guess. And it took four guys to come in there and grab my body and swing me into Dylan's mother's room. Oh, shit. I remember that. And... As soon as I landed on the floor, they couldn't get me into the bed, you know, big boy. But um, I puked everywhere, and I was so blackout and drunk that I could have easily drowned in my own puke at that point. I was puking so much. I remember, I remember vague images of, like, being just, like, covered, like, swimming in puke, you know, unable to do anything, so blackout drunk. And then I woke up, like, five hours later, completely covered head to toe in puke. And I was somehow in the bed of his mom's room and I had Sharpies all over me and shit. And it was like, what a waste of fucking time. I never got blackout drunk like that ever again. I remember I was covered head to toe in black Sharpie and puke all over myself. And I said them to do when you could add alcohol poisoning. Yeah, I could have easily died that night. And I remember Tyler down stole my shoes for some reason. <laughs> so I had to go home with no shoes on covered in puke and Sharpies and penises on me. And 
I was like, there's nothing I can do. I can only fucking pray that my mom is not on lunch. And thankfully she was not on lunch, but the pool was open. People listening. I used to live at a pool called Briarwood. My grandparents owned it. I lived upstairs and uh, my great, I walked through the entrance and my grandparents, I was like, what are they going to, they're going to tell my mom. And they just said, Hey, Adrian, and didn't even notice somehow. And I walked upstairs and took a very shameful shower Never got that drunk again. So that's going to you... be in your coming of age movie, right? No. How did Maybe. you get home? Uh, someone dropped me off. Okay. I don't remember. Shit. But yeah, that was a weird way to start the fucking 12th grade year. One one time when Halo 3 came out, I stayed up and drank Mountain Dew Game Fuel and played it all night. That's my equivalent to that story. And then you were sick the next day. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, I was uh, 17. But, but, but Xander was sick. For like a week with diarrhea because he drank a 12 pack of game fuel to himself. <laughs> Bring back game fuel, please. I can't even drink a single sugar soda now without shitting myself. So. Bring back game fuel. <laughs> bring back like a bring back game fuel, but make it like zero okay. sugar. Yeah. Anyway. Mountain Dew code red, but zero sugar. Oh yeah. Well, I remember okay. One more thing is that uh remember. We would we would go hang out at the football game, obviously. And um, one time, my pants cashier in front of the fucking it happened to be in front of the principals, all the principals, vice principals, and the superintendent just happened yes. to turn the corner as I pants cashier all the way to his ankles, and I ran off. And then they approached cashier and then banned him from going to any. No, no, you're missing game. a key thing. You pantsed me and ran off. I didn't know why you ran off. And since everybody was laughing at me, after I pulled my pants back up, I said, fuck it, and pulled them back down. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's your own fucking fault. And then, uh, that was the same night that uh, I was like, I got kicked out of football games for the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I got to make out with my girlfriend for the first time. In the oh, car. yeah, yeah. And then you told us about it. Yeah. <laughs> One time Thanks. I got in trouble at a football game because I threw a bottle of piss off the balcony. Like, off the balcony. <laughs> <Piece> of <laughs> shit. Oh, I would have been so mad. I don't even That's remember who it fun. hit, but it hit like three people and they were just fucking like. I would have fucked you up, Sam. That would have made me so angry. I it's don't funny do how words. the dynamics of the football game work. There's like the stands where you hang out, and then there's like that side area with the grass. The sessions right under it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> that's what the piss bomb went right the down to the concessions. Stands. Colin, Colin and I used up. to walk to the other side where the fucking way team was and just talk shit until people wanted to yeah. fight. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. then they, they had they had to dude like back before they, they before, had to get sorry, a, before. Uh, a guard to guard uh Cabot uh because yeah. we were starting shit over there and then it would turn fucking violent and people would go crazy. <laughs> dude, like I remember yeah, that shit before I was in you know high school before varsity when we were like in junior high or whatever and we would go to these games and just sit on the other fucking side <laughs> like wearing our yeah. colors and shit and just fucking giving them hell like it got i would remember it would get so bad at times you could literally hear it from across the football field to the other stands you could just hear people cussing and screaming at each no, other i remember that shit yeah that's how people fucking get about fucking high school sports high school football. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> fucked up <laughs> It makes sense because we're like fucking teenagers, but like it's the grown fucking the adults getting involved too. I hate to admit that uh, starting. I hate to admit that. uh, Shout out to Mr. Matt Smith. Uh, Matt Smith and I once drove all the way to Bryant to start shit with fucking. (laughs) We're like nineteen. Uh, we drink. We drove a fucking fifth of Jack Daniels and drove to fucking Bryant and went to go start shit. Um. So yeah, I hate to admit that, but that was always a fun time. Uh, for those but, at home listening, Matt Smith, uh, he would regularly come to the cul-de-sac and then have me blow into his fucking blow and go. Yeah, you know, if you if, if oh, you yeah. get a DUI, if you don't know a breathalyzer, then, yeah, you get a breathalyzer attached to your fucking car that you have to breathe into before you can drive. <laughs> and he would, uh, he would. He, I, I did it for him once, and then the second time I was like, nah. And then he was like, he gave me a little, you know, something, something. And I was like, okay, I mean, I'll, you know, you, you got my attention. I'll blow into your thing, you fucking piece of shit. And, uh, <laughs> shout out Matt Smith for being a vibe killer. Uh, <laughs> he was yeah. a vibe sometimes, especially when he had codeine. It was always fun. No, 
he would fucking fucking Matt Smith. One time at the cul-de-sac, he he was wearing a Four Today shirt with a, which is a shitty fucking Christian band, and Sumner, being a fucking pretentious asshole that he is, made a fucking wisecrack about Four Today, and Matt Smith being an eternally fucking douchebag jock 16 year old football dickhead meathead except he's fucking 20 21 at this time maybe 22 and, and i also don't think he played football i know yeah exactly but <laughs> he's, fucking he's like all of that but without time. the athletic ability yeah. yeah like we're talking about a fucking man in his 20s that would still go blue white you know trying to get people hype right so, so yeah Sumner makes just a tiny little fucking crack about four today and matt smith fucking gets in his face like this close like what the fuck bro what do you fucking think bro you're fucking blah 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 and he's like um he's like i bet your dad bought you your fucking car you pussy and <laughs> someone's like what <laughs> and and he just said he kept saying fuck you fuck you fuck for like like 10 minutes and i kept saying matt 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 stop matt and he's like Adrian, not now, bro. I got to teach this fucking, you know, whatever word, uh, a fucking lesson. And um, so, yeah, that's the kind of guy we're dealing with. Then I had my times with him. I uh, went- fucking flicking matches at Cody and Cody got really fucking pissed off. And Cody's not confrontational like that. So he says, if you don't quit fucking flinging matches at me, I'm going to go sleep in my car. And Matt kept flicking lit matches at him. And so Cody went and slept in his car for an hour and a half and then came back. <laughs> and everyone's like, where were you? He's like, I slept in my car. <laughs> and then Matt Smith felt bad and went home anyway. Yeah, I had my times with him. I, had, I went through a pretty rough breakup and went through like a two-month Matt Smith uh, debaucherous time and <laughs> destroyed a bathroom at UCA, drunk and on codeine and... <laughs> It was fun times, man. I I I, I I I'd kick it with him again. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't uh, die of alcohol poisoning. That's the real thing here. Uh, yeah. Don't drink green beer like they do in Super Bad Kids. That'll probably get you sick. Um. Yeah. Anyway, anything well, else? You St. Patrick's Day, dude. No, you. Oh yeah. Green beer you can have on St. Patrick's Day. It's cool. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think I think this is a good cast. Uh, super bad. Yeah, it super sucks. Super mid. <laughs> no, it's a fucking fantastic movie. Uh, if you're a fucking Neanderthal, <laughs> yeah, check it out. We should review the Geico Caveman TV series. Oh my god, dude! I watched the pilot to that when it came out, dude. What the fuck was wrong with me? I had the chance to meet him yesterday. <laughs> what the he was fuck? at that con. Yeah, Jeff Daniel Phillips. Wow. He's also playing Herman Munster in the Rob Zombie Munsters. No shit. Oh, oh shit. That movie looks like ass. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm kind of split on it. I don't know. See, but that trailer was ass. I'm going I'm to watch it. it. Yeah, I'm going to see it to see. I just feel like it looks like a cheap 90s Porn Halloween parody? like candy commercial. But that might be the fucking point. I don't yeah, know. I think that I think that might be it too. That trailer was ass. I'm going to watch it anyway. Anyway, Thanks for watching, folks. Next week, we're doing Larry David's Sour Grapes. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) We're doing David Lynch's A Straight Story. Yeah, the the one Disney movie that David Lynch did. Yeah, no thanks. People love that movie. I can't get into it. Thanks for watching, everybody.